the matches so we can talk about the decks and first are uh, Nequis's decks uh, on screen we see Stockpile, Precision Strike, Patricidal Fury and uh, Enslave. Let's move to Sunwinters. Sunwinter is a participant of Gwent World Cup as well but uh, after qualifying from top 32 qualifiers uh, is here competing and once again we see the stockpile okay my predictions are pretty accurate here so we do have stockpile here for sun on blue coin and it is warriors on the red coin for necklace so okay, redanian so. secret services going back into the deck we already see musicians coming out to play their music onto the board and radovid judgment to start with with that crystal skull so interesting using it on the radovid rather than one of the griffin which is in hand really valuing ensuring the Radovid lives because that gives you so much carryover on all of your Timurian infantries. Okay, I'll need uh, a moment to add the player info since the platform broke, so please take us to the first turns here. Okay, I'll just... So yes, then we have Carabalista coming down, thins out that Siege Master, draws into Flotsam, very nice to see. Uh, as an artifact, Flotsam is one of the few cards that isn't tutorable with that Royal Decree, so you'd love to see that in hand, even maybe playing a round 2 to set up the resilience for either that round 2 or round 3. Um, mm. On the other side, Nequia is just playing out the first Warlord, um, that's plus 1 to all the damages on raids for the rest of the game. Likely the Blood Eagle coming out here from Vabion to play the second Highland <laughs> Warlord. For the feeble of heart! Yeah, you'd love to have access to both of them from hand, but if you have to do it with the Blood Eagle, so be it. Uh, it's uh, a lot of control uh, enhancement for the siege engines. Yeah, and at, at least killing the siege moss, you deny the crew and the Carabalista, so it only gets that one armor. But uh, very smart here for Sanvanta, playing the Reinforced Ballista on the range row. Getting that one boost from the formation keeps it out of range for Primal Savagery. Early Flotsam. Yeah, decides that uh, Flotsam is... Uh, the play here doesn't play the Witcher uh, from hand, but gets uh, an extra copy. So they, they are prepared, there is a lot of them. Um, so floats on round one, what does it mean? Does it mean that he senses uh, a round victory win and then plans to use uh, Adalia with uh, infantry in round two? Skellige doesn't have the tempo. So that might be... Yeah, the pass from Neck was here. And uh, you get yourself a flute, some carry over. I don't think uh, you are risking going into a long round against uh, a heap of removal here. Uh, I also noticed that your camera is frozen. Are you with us, Lemon? Uh, okay, hopeful. Okay, your camera is okay. back. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> so, the Lutsum Kiriover is there. Adalia and Timurian Infantry is in hand as well. So, read on dropping the Lutsum round one was correct. Oh, we also see back row uh, going <laughs> for an extra point. There, you cannot break the shield and kill the unit especially this early on with no location on board so nice one extra point greed from San Vanter makes sense all the random pings are uh, not capable, there is just not enough of them to, to kill a full power unit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You cannot go super tall, 
but uh, Sandvinter doesn't know the champion's charge is in deck and so is Fukusha so there is no access if I'm not mistaken for the Wabjorn yeah that that is correct yeah nice decides screen. not to use the water of the flotsam immediately yeah. but he has the second copy of infantry and protecting an engine is uh, quite good here yeah let's make it yeah just consistent one damage each turn so as the round progresses it'll help uh, stay ahead here for the northern realms even so, I guess set up the plug as on the opponent's board, not that that helps. Mm. So ideally you'd want to play the casting contest immediately so that your uh, bronzes are not dying, but uh, yeah, there was only a Dale and you don't want to double buff that uh, Playing into champion's charge, so we see instead uh, Sandvanter is opting to protect his engines. That most likely means that uh, the contest will be played on uh, Carabalist or something, or just get yeah. round three and Mulligan away. Oh, wait, there is still Here's one where... copy, right? Yeah, there is still Tamirian in yeah, and Garrison, there. so there are more of them. Let's go with Doom Viandra. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you'd take a Dream Viandra here. I'd expect the Tumina infantry, infantry to be killed off, perhaps by this War of Clans. Because um, it's just, you don't want to leave it when you know your opponent's playing casting contests. It's just worth way too many points. Yeah. So, Blood Eagle can play Bronzes or Brand. That's not uh, too exciting. Instead, we see uh, War of Clans. The point gap is uh, so that so that Skellige has to play either leader and so or uh, tier tier in the first uh, form yeah. is damaging by the difference between boost and the base power. So that's like a 19 point play as well. For honor. But that wouldn't be enough alone to catch up, so yeah, it would require leader as well, and at that point your serve suddenly isn't so great. And also tears a lot better in the round three, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd probably prefer to save that. Here's the Griffin Witcher, just uh, gets locked immediately because we are at adrenaline condition already. These uh, gutting slashes aren't looking that great without the blood test, I mean they'll still play for seven points. But that is sort of just struggling to keep up with the point slam here coming out from the siege engines, just doing their consistent bits of damage. Uh, I wonder if there's even an argument to just heat wave this round and push for a 2 0, if you just save it and ensure you get last say against the tier. We'll see what Nequis uh, decided to do, but. Oh, Sandmanta decides to do, but yeah, Nequis. Uh will have to play his golds most likely here yeah either way it goes so for sanvanter here it's just uh, about reading the situation reading your opponent's hand maybe maybe deciding that 2-0 is on the cards you see blood eagle into a bronze yeah. but yeah, there is no stopping by the looks of it we get another Imerian infantry and you have to play a three point gutting slash most likely. Or okay, you can clash yeah. with location, but then you are wasting your location also on three damage. It's not exciting. It just that you know that casting contest is there and it's uh playing for fifteen. I don't think in this situation Equis can risk it. Yeah, I don't agree either. And, and it sucks no matter what you do here, because let's say you play a gutting slash on it. The Tamirian Infantry trades up 10 points. Uh, that's just not what you want. But I don't know what the alternative is here. It's just something you have to bite the bullet with. And uh, with the boost going through, there's also just all the bloodthirst being taken away here. So the serve is only going to be able to take out, say, like the Savage Bear. Yeah. 
Um, unless you manage to save the clash, but I don't think that's really the correct play. Okay, so instead we do see Guardian Slash playing for full value, but uh, so does play the casting contest. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's so that's a risk that I don't think you can afford to take. 9 versus 15. That's plus 6 for casting contest. Yeah, and I don't think there's a way to get like the six bloodthirst here either. Um, so, mm. your location is a way to activate it, or you just go for four. Uh, yeah. I got my scar? In addition to the slash, I suppose you could get it, but be a little bit difficult to oh, line up. So he goes for instant value. And. Uh, See the almost catch up here. Problem is, you gave quite a valuable heat wave target over to your opponent here. Uh, whereas, if you maybe delayed that a turn, sort of just played the gutting slash, the heat wave would have been a lot less good. But the pass does come through regardless, and uh, I think it's just going to have to be the tier. Uh, unless, ooh, maybe. Okay, gutting slash is nine, slash. gets six points on the K troll. Um, That's still short. Yeah, 9 plus 6 is uh, 1. Wait, is it really 1 short? <laughs> so yeah. we might see. Okay. So location carry over travels, but uh, you basically are only playing Hukusha and King Bran, maybe. But King Bran is similar to Brockward Warrior. Depending on yeah, the it's armor really status. Not great. Sanvanta needs units though to buff. Sanvanta needs to draw the King Henselt here, basically. Yeah. Draw Sepulter's Pride, but that's your only King Henselt target right now. So do you mulligan that, hoping for the Henselt? Because otherwise you're kind of running into potential bricks. This last mulligan choice could be disastrous. Uh, I, I got the visual back uh, with Dream Viandra and Poltus Pride. Was Dream Same. the mulligan target? I assume so. One. Okay. So, decisions, decisions. Do we want one power yeah. siege? Uh, Just holds, doesn't risk okay. it. So, yeah. Which is probably safer. Um, can go slightly uninteractive here. Yeah, most likely will do. I see no reason not heat waving. Yeah. Be with the uh, big bodies already gone. And that's game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't really see a way out of it, considering leader advantage was lost for Skellige. Um The Falter's Pride, even with just leader alone, would be more than enough. So yeah, Sunvanter takes game one. Okay, so Sunvanter... Uh, I think we'll see Madag, but that's just a 50-50, honestly, from me here. And it's a correct 50-50. Wow. Nice. <laughs> okay. Alright. Will the King Slayer be drawn here? Yes, it is. There we go. That's what the Madoc player would love to see. Ooh, don't love the Madoc in hand. Guess we'll see that gone back just like that, Hubert, right? Good Adelia draw for Nequiz, quite skilled, as well as the Vigo being drawn for Sanfanta. Yeah, there is heat wave in Equis's hand, so that Madoc might uh, just uh, uh, make a, yeah. a cameo appearance here, not really staying for too long. Yeah, this is gonna be rough for Madoc. You have heat wave for the Madoc, uh, muzzle for the Phoenix, um, oiling oils for Master of Puppets, or if they try to get through Illusionist, you have the pings from Carabalistas, which uh, you can try to protect a bit on the back row, get them out of range of bombs. Uh, no. A bit annoying with the Redanian Secret Service drawn there with the Siege Masters, but the second one does come out anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but this uh, Siege, yeah, or not Siege, uh, stockpile is running uh, a few tall units thanks to Adalia and Timerian infantry spam, so I wonder uh, if Master of Puppets can still 
get the job done or will they be all pink the way because uh, Sunbinder is not playing that uh, famous master stack with uh, also battery filters yeah. so I guess yeah I guess what the alternative here is with the Maddox scorn you're just going to pivot hard into master of puppets trying to use the Ramon onto illusionist once you truffle an illusionist even let the king slayer can get you another master of puppets but yeah. it's uh illusionists are also quite good on engines if you get them early the problem is you mm. spawn one point engines uh, siege engines and they are getting pinged away with your opponent ones uh, in the next round potentially if yeah. there are still machines uh, of course hansel uh, with the stockpile especially if that Radovich finds it home uh, at uh, Nequis's hand later on uh, with five charges uh, it's a devastating board wipe uh, waiting for happen yeah although I, I don't think you'll get to five charges here I think oh, you'll yeah. see a, okay. at minimum like a leader plus a bomb killing the Radovich when it's played True. with the Crystal Skull Gorn here in particular. Also, Radovid needs to be found because it's currently not in access. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bombs are not amazing. Might as well be in on red coin. Play them uh, out of your deck. Yeah, especially the three damage bomb. It's not going to kill anything and it's unlikely to sort of get the death blow and then go on to something else as well. So what can Sanvanter grab now? Heat wave? Considering you you'll have Timerian infantry playing on deploy boosting to like 12. Uh, you also have Hanseld growing, yeah. but once again like everything everything probably cannot be controlled, but a lot of things can be thanks to leader. And we see the heat wave grabbed. And Master of Puppets traveling to your opponent's side of the board, but not on board, straight to the graveyard, activating the Medusionists. Yeah. Does it have an agent tag? It should, yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. Do doing the the work. Alright. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is, I don't know if I mentioned, the Phoenix is quite sketchy up against the Vigo's muzzle, because not only does that deal with the Phoenix, but then it actually becomes active for your opponent here. So unless you're able to maybe boost the Phoenix up with, like, a Mushy Truffulos boost or something on the same turn, it's quite awkward. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, so we see that not all Temerian infantry uh, need to be played at 5 leader charges. Uh, your opponent yeah, can uh, stop that, and also you have to play something, draw dependent. dependent it's uh, more that. Yeah. Because what, what do you play here? Do you play the Redanian Secret Service? Uh, that's really bad. You want to have that for next round to counter the imprisonment leader. Uh, you don't want to play your golds here, so then you're literally only left with Timurian infantry. Which is, yeah, not ideal. So, Sandmanter needs to close a 20 plus point gap, uh, meaning that he either needs to rely on his uh, Master of Puppets starting right here, right now, and he can do that. There are no active charges on Carabalistas, but besides that, uh, yeah, this round is doomed. And he will be better just passing. No idea how this matchup goes. Uh, this that got on my radar basically five days ago when people started to uh, like jamming and showing uh, good results uh, on ladder with it. Uh, the stockpile one. But I haven't played it myself for more than two games yet. And the, the other thing is also, I don't think most Maddox decks run the Master of Puppets. So this gives uh, mm. uh, Necklace something quite valuable to sort of uh, pivot into here. Oh, sorry, Sanvanta, something mm. to pivot so into. So there, there are no crew machines in deck for Necklace. Uh, 
at the moment. Carabalistas were played round mm -hmm. one, and last Mulligan brought Fulte Sprite. Fulte just yes. wanted to at least participate in uh, this yeah. uh, hangout day of other kings. He, he wasn't invited himself, but at least he sent his pride. It, it still irks me how uh, yeah, Fulte's pride works best with the uh, king himself. <laughs> it's understandable. So, Sanvanter is not uh, burning his leader charge here. Maybe expected Nequis to get out of the round. I don't know. But lead ah wait, he also didn't see the second Redanian service, so you'd need to like use two leader charges. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm super surprised that this Radovid was allowed to stick. Like you could have dealt with it with the bomb and leader. Yeah. But uh I suppose that might have been, but Mm, I don't know, maybe that's the next level, like, you know that uh, your head of it is not going through, so maybe you just threw it on seven cards and uh, you are planning to pass, so I'll play my Masha Truffle as a get over, no idea, I'm just trying to speedball, but yeah, this uh, extra leader charge is two points uh, on the volunteer body, it is uh, plus two points per every Timerian. Here as well, we do see Neck with uh, buffing golds, of course. Here, no bronzes to buff anyway, but uh, important to know that uh, Master of Puppets cannot swap with gold, so yes. So and uh, currently, this Roderick is only finding a phoenix here for some Vanta. Look at this. Look at this synergy muzzle plus Redain and Secret Service. You steal something and then you can uh, use it immediately. Also, as you mentioned, good at stealing uh, Phoenixes uh, and also keeping that vitality. The card would have been pretty great in this match. Uh, uh, either way, it would go. Unless protection with artifacts is going to be happening to the important targets, which it wasn't. Uh, yeah, so, what is... Yeah, I I, I, have a, I would think your best choice is going like Roderick Phoenix and Kingslayer Phoenix. Um, like, it doesn't matter if the Phoenixes get killed, they still get their resilience through here. Uh, but uh, looks like worried a bit about the points, trying to get the more illusions on board. This does give engines to help you contest this problem. Well, set, setting up Phoenix is nice, but if your hatchup uh, will require you to play uh, Mashet Ruffle as well, it's six points yeah. lost. That is true. But Ramon is also quite a big commitment. Yeah, it does yeah, force yeah. the pass at the very least. Uh, but that was kind of inevitable for Nequiz with the Brick Ten Salt in hand. So there's the Phoenix. Uh, yeah. Not much left in the ways of Illusionists. Though I guess Vigo can help yeah. get another and perhaps save drive if it is found. Yeah, Ooh, we have. Both Mulligans are forced here for the Northern Realms onto the uh, Pride and the Hubert. Uh, luckily, doesn't draw the decree. That would have been a uh, disastrous if that was found in those mulligans, because uh, that wouldn't have really had a proper target. But uh, yeah. days away from that. Okay, so what are we setting up? We are setting up uh, masters of puppets yeah. immediately. But uh, yeah, that's no concern for Nequis at the moment. Deals with. Uh, Illusionist, Illusionist uh, going one on the board, dying, and then the next comes is not as scary as you can uh, just kill off the, their create targets. Uh, what are you doing here with your boiling oil? There is still, you expect at least one more Illusionist to come. Yeah, minimum. So you cannot kill that? 
yeah, you need to basically get value with your siege engines on deploy here, I think, because between the bomb potential and the leader, you just need to get them through straight away. Can you Alternatively, go... try, try to play reinforce with the back row as well. Can you go for Hansel now? I, I guess on this rope, not anymore, but you could have I don't tried. Think that's so... a rush to go for the Hansel. I mean, these Master of Puppets are useless if you don't have any bronzes on board. So luck is fine. Okay, so you just you need the Hansel for finisher. The... Actually, the luck is sketchy because now uh, San Vanta can play, in theory, like a Master of Puppets or something, just next to the locked Master of Puppets and then oil wouldn't uh, be a viable choice to kill the yeah second one because it would uh, purify on the death blur so what is the sniper bring in anything bad not really but the bombs are not amazing so let's it, it see is the sniper here. Stop your yapping and start ah, okay So, okay, trying to minimize units, basically just saying you're not going to get any targets for your Temerian infantry here. Uh, you're either going to give me a chance to kill it or just have to boost bronzes, then my Master of Puppets can do things. But so master... maybe this gets to stay alive. And, uh, master of so is... Puppets is sadly dying. Yeah, I mean. The senses can be fooled easily. I am... Okay, so the thing you were talking about, it's here. Yeah, so I'm not sure how Nequiz responds here. Oil is not great, because you deal with one Master Puppets and you re-enable another. You could go for, like, the hand salt here with Leader to chunk them down. Um... Alternatively, sort of just slow play it a little bit, maybe play the Griffin Witcher. Yeah, it just expends the oil. That's why I think oil should have come before the Derogory. Or well, just playing uninteractive against the Mallow because it gets better. Okay, so Kingslayer decides uh, a change of profession. And instead of being that horse, uh, the, the dagger killing kings, uh, he will be manipulating from the shadows. So. But I, I don't think it's going to be enough here, though, because Nekos can just last say with this mm. uh, Tumerian infantry. The Hensa and the Fortress Pride are both going to be gold. Sure, you'll slightly play into the Red Haze, perhaps the Heat Wave, but it, it sh should be enough uh, with the Fortress Pride doing so much damage. Yeah, you cannot really avoid... Uh... Stacking three units in a row when you are playing uh, Illusionist here. Yeah. So basically, what it is. Yeah, value bomb here. Sadly, the top deck could have been a little bit better with uh, Sleep Driver, I suppose. Ah, there we go. There is the answer. Hubert was hiding, and Hubert is uh, the recipient of this buff. Yes, this is must... kind. Go. Yeah. I was just gonna say this is kind of like equivalent. You sort of lose value potentially on your hand cell, but instead you play around uh, the heat wave, keeping your tall hand cell, and uh, yeah, that's that. So. Oh. An arc, pretty good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> As uh, expected, uh, stockpiles are doing things. Uh, so, stockpile gets yeah. a win here. 1 1, this is the first semi final, and we are going into game 3 in a moment. It would be. A battle between the Skellige, okay, two Skellige leaders are chosen, San Vanter indeed goes for the pirates and I'll need to update the score as well. Yeah, so warriors can have a bit of a tough time against the pirates if they get like, you know, a lot of armor that, and then the uh, raids just don't have a fun time getting through that armor. Yeah. 
Uh, on the other hand, if I remember correctly, the pirates kind of struggled against uh, the point slam of warriors. Uh, yeah. Um, dif different awesome. version, of course, uh, being played here. Extra points coming from uh, Sunset Wanderers, for example, and you you got more power, more provisions uh, overall. Speaking of proactivity, no bronze ships. Uh, and no, to play no. out, uh, you don't want to risk yeah, discarding other... anything. No yes, target. That is the thing with the musicians. You only have the Uncray long ships. You don't have your Dimmin light long ships. I knows it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. There are only red ships. No ranged row ships. Uh, well, there are gold ones as well. We see... Naval supremacy. Yeah, but doesn't value the deploy of just uh, finding a ship. Just mm -hmm. gets it in the graveyard, so it's activated straight away. Probably wants to save the raging bear to get the biggest serve possible. Uh, in fact, I think that's the only beast in this deck, actually. So yeah, not many options on the serve. It needs to kill something quite big. We shall do it my way. Okay, nice pickup of Commander's Horn, considering you already yeah. played uh, Axel, you can, if if needed, uh, come in that. We also have, like, a card I haven't seen in a while, the Feral Bond, so <laughs> nice to see. Mm. Just a nice little one-off there. Yeah, we do see Abotage discarded, so I'm sure Sun Vanta has been counting their thinning here. Keeping in mind they will draw six more cards throughout the game, one just will thin another. So really only needs, I think, one more additional thin to get the compass online. Uh, I haven't thought much about thinning here, but uh, I don't know. I don't think there's enough to do double compass in this deck either. But, uh, mm, yeah, it looks yeah. more like a one-off uh, for Fukusha or whatever is... Uh... It that you're fancy in for round three. Uh, so finds the pies pattern here. Of course, warriors playing uh, slowly, setting up the graveyard, uh, setting up the raid damage carryover. Uh, are in need of some extra points here. Tallest unit you can kill is a five, so that, that is not getting you anywhere. Uh, so how much uh, would you need to spend on catching up here? You can go to Pabjorn, yeah, so that's uh, roping, but we'll get there, Pr Primal Savagery. Okay, waiting for Lemon to return as well. Something's up, and are you here? I think so. It's yeah, okay. welcome happened. back. We have warriors uh, throwing not everything, but a lot here for uh, catching up. And we actually see the bleeding going through, and uh, warlord uh, creating some extra carry over there, dying from bleeds, but coming back after a little skellige ritual so main cards preserved here for neckways sunwanter uh, will have uh, room to play his carryover but i'm not sure if there is anything for the carryover considering kartrol that didn't make the cut Okay, and he's back again. Hello, hello. Right, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. People will understand. Um, Mattel, where, when are we having on-site uh, tournaments with <laughs> all the players and uh, casters invited to Poland? Yeah, I'd love to fly all the way across here. Yeah. Able Thanks. to, yeah, note that for a deck that need, is kind of forced to thin to play out your um, golden, your magic compass here, you do need to play three cards from the dry pass. 
because otherwise you'd have sort of extra mulligans rather than those cards being played from hand. You'd just have too many cards in your deck at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, do so your abordage. I, I think you need to keep the abordage to have mm-hmm. enough thinning, if I've counted it correctly. Oh, wait, or so yeah. would also thin by one, actually. It's whether you want to try to... You cannot damage yeah, anything, though. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. So, that, that, okay, so Sam okay. Hunter decides that he'll, he'll thin enough. He yeah, throws the, three, the other... Sunset throws. Uh, the yeah. other problem here is there is only the Raging Bear that can be used with the Sove. And you'll have the other Dodge and the Sunset Wanderers both top decking here in the round three. So you kind of need to play that Sove before those go through. That is, if you at least find the serve and not the raging bear. Okay. There, there it is. But, uh, the last mulligan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just jumping in the last card uh, here. I know. Cards are probably yeah, not what Skellige uses for commuting most of the time. Yeah. But, uh, to be fair, yeah. that should have been guaranteed because, yeah, there was only five ah, cards okay, left in yeah. decks, even though it was the bottom card. Okay. Uh, enough thinning was found to make that guaranteed. And yeah, with no Warriors Purify or anything, it is fine to just lead out with the Serve here. Uh, yeah, not running into any of those top deck problems. Yeah. Okay, so Kyr Trolled is landing here, and uh, Red Ship. How much of a problem is Pirates uh, all armored up, besides the newly? Drone Demon Pirate here. So you you are not really scared of this longship too much. But it gets answered nonetheless. Uh, only have what uh, one gold bolt here so demon smuggler is a newly buff card you, if played next to ship it spawns uh, a beast copy of self on this row for that uh, we'll need uh, to see the ship yeah you don't really want to play that ship too early either Next, we see another. And I come in of the uncreated longship here. Feels like an onslaught card mostly, but he sees a lot of action in this uh, Warriors list uh, played by Nequis at the moment. Uh, there is only two Warriors in. Bronze Warriors in the graveyard. Uh, there is War of Clans. Kuko, of course, can pick up uh, Wabjord instead, so. You don't need the second target there. And the second War of Clans is uh, what you'd want from Vabjorn, so you, you have to pick up something that is not a warrior from your graveyard then. Yeah. A lot of hidden points here for that soul <laughs> sticking. I'm uh, gonna mm. get buffed by 16. Yeah. But yeah, it is contingent on that damage being done to the Raging Bear. Which, granted, there's not too much else you're worried about damaging against Warriors, except for shutting down that tier straight away. But that should be quite easy, whether you... I'm mean, probably just, what, like a leader and charge in the Beyond should be enough there. Am I? I'm fine on the Discord side of things now. I think. Uh, you should be. Yeah. Is your okay. game okay? My game is. No, my game is stuck at the start of round three, basically. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, you'll have to. Uh, I guess you cannot really restart it uh, by any means. Uh, I can try and share you the screen. Uh, if it doesn't mess things up, otherwise, uh, just focus on the game. 
Okay, so... It might mess up the camera, so I'll just hide your camera for this game. Uh, we see the compass played for Puko. And you'd need to axle bodies, I would assume, for... Ah, although, with, uh, with the ship. Gone. Do we go for Axel event? Uh, did you get the the screen lemon? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Nice. I feel like Axel is a good choice because you do need to get your uh, uh, commander's horn together. So it just goes for the maximum rain value, which there are five turns of rain, so you'll miss out on one of those turns. I guess, uh, yes, and Hunter decided that he'll have enough. Uh, Units and warriors cannot kill all of them, but there is also a play for like protection of the bear. Uh, and Equus more or less knows what Sanvantar has played, there are no leader charges, so yeah. But you are losing card yeah. all the points that uh, with doing that, if so you're, if you're able to shut down. The infusion, I mean, that's worth it. It could yeah. come very much down to RNG on what the rain is going to hit. But, yeah, we're not playing into the rain. Okay. Uh, yeah, strange going for that, but at the same time not going for that. Uh, yeah. With uh, a yeah, rain blockade. That. Can Sanvanter deal 8? He can pick up... Bjorn. As he doesn't need mm. that maxi, and I think that's uh, pretty straightforward here. Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. I think if you want the kill, which would be worth it, but it does feel bad having to lose the six points on board. But you will gain quite a few uh, back mm. on yeah the infusion going through. Don't think any any more armor can be amassed. Warriors are not known. Uh, uh, for <laughs> providing for their beasts and for their well, warriors, they yeah. just go into the battle. Yeah, I, unless there's like some tier, but that's uh, only with graveyard shenanigans with the other warriors. Not gonna help a raging bear. So, that should be the Bjorn basically tied up. I don't think there's gonna be much of a way to get more bloodthirst for the Bjorn. I guess the smuggler can help a little bit with that. We'll tend your ankle uh, biters too. Yeah, do you see the front row finally getting the five units for the commander's horn? Still haven't seen Fakusha for Nequiz. Wonder what the choice is going to be from yeah. that. Will it be should, able to help? Should be the front row? There is a Wabior yeah, into World uh, Clans, into uh, Uncreate Warrior. Yeah, so you can, yeah, so you can heal. kill some of those. Uh, War of Clans is dealing five damage. You'll get uh, rain, RNG. No, it, it's not mattering much. You cannot kill two units here cleanly. And the only target there uh, doesn't even go for the kill. It just takes the points. So, so is uh, beefing up a little bit here. Uh, he was on a strong uh, diet for most of this round, but in the end, he gets a plenty of bear meat by the looks of it. Uh, so, Commander Spawn is fine. You, you'll definitely get value out yeah. of that. You even have a gold on the front row that your opponent cannot interact with. You are, meet, uh, you are met with your opponent's soul, so point-wise, it's uh, as close as it gets. Question is, Commander is the horn bigger or is the brand bigger? Uh, oh, Which is better at commanding the arm? It's only 12. And nice 69 points for Sanvanter to take a victory here. Was. Yeah. Deceptively 
apart point wise for the players uh, before before the bear kill screen we have Sanvanter winning with uh, NR and Skellige now Maddox list is uh, the one the last one he needs to go through with he has it on red coin first which is uh, uh, what you'd want and now we are going into the game number four of this first semi-final of uh, community grand open and you've got me right now okay seems to be updated everything yeah huh. can maddock do it against the simulate been a long time since he seen met with the simulate most likely yeah so this is when i was running maddock a lot on ladder assimilate was my most uh, scary matchup especially if they found the taurus round one because then they could copy your nausicaas which we don't actually see here but more particularly they could copy their Ramon and the save drivers and vigo when it was just not a very fun time <laughs> but the taurus is missing here <laughs> All, so the, all the bronzes and Artorius accompanying uh, Calvit on right his on endeavor. Okay, Maddox is there. So you can seize the Maddox, but you'd much rather seize the Kingslayer Maddox if the opponent does have that Kingslayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I would expect Roderick to be. Yeah, not guaranteed. You probably don't mm. want to was... to roll here. Yeah, it, Just yeah, it was lucky that the Renegade did get uh, drawn, so the Roderick is now slightly more consistent if you want to risk it. But uh, maybe that's not a biscuit you're willing to chase. Okay, so we do see Master of Puppets landing. It's... Uh, you need to keep in mind that you are playing against Nilfgaard and they have things like Duchess's Informant uh, yeah. to copy the Master of Puppets later and just overrun you with uh, your own tactics, although Sanvanter's list is not really going tall, especially since you mentioned no Nausicaa at all here. Um, what else is there? Okay, we do see... Slayer. Let's find it. It was a two and three, so you would think that it should be more likely than not. Uh, it does get ahead here, though I would not be surprised to see. Uh, actually, no leader from Nequis just yet. Maybe not rushing. No sun, uh, no heat wave for Sunwanter. He has Wilgeforce to provide him with that heat wave. <laughs> by the looks of it. Um, I mean, there's no heat wave in either deck here, no. No, I, I meant like we've seen that. Uh, oh yes, yes, yes in other matchups. So he's just relying okay, on the yes. opponent. So adding heat wave, no luck here. So yeah. no tall punish means yeah, Nekus can I mean, go tall. Um, yeah, still the Vilga Forts, but uh, that's not going to be uh, coming for quite a while, I think. You can pick up your own rotary <laughs> if you if you are afraid that you are not getting to to one of your goals uh, naturally but uh, shouldn't be the case honestly Suffering in yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really curious what Nequis is going to use there and slave leader on here you could use it on a maddock phoenix is also not the very good target uh even if you're able to give spying to a phoenix you know cool it Sees it when the vitality is done a bit more. Uh, get it from Terra Nova. You can get potentially like three phoenixes all at once, which is a bit problematic for Maddox, especially if you only click them on your last turn. That doesn't give a lot of time to interact with all those points. But Nequis is happy also to get uh, Ramon Spine yeah. for him, so that. Uh, those Nausicaas, everyone loves some good old uh, Neil of God Nausicaa spam. So if, if they can get uh, going, that's uh, that's nice. It also might be not true yeah. statement at all. Not not sure. Obey How many fans are there? 
of Nausicaa. Yeah, the, the other thing is that at the Terra Nova being, sorry, the Ramon being played from Terra Nova gives quite a nice art towards target for Nequiz if the Ramon does stick for at least one turn. Mm, but, true. Yeah. So, okay, Master Puppets clicked, seizes that uh, Simulate engine. Uh, if it sticks for one more turn, could be used by Nequiz uh, to reverse that seize. But, uh, wonder whether we will see playing into this still. I mean, you can at least just keep building up on this Carl V. You're not worried about a Tor punish, but it does take the loss on even yeah. and decides to let it go through before going down to four cards. So leader so kept, our tot set up, and you play till Calvid. So now, now you are defending yourself with the best cards you got. Yeah. Notably, there is no leader, right? The card that people were like pretty excited about, mm. and there, there are lines of leaders still in Northern Wind, but uh, not the case uh, in this yeah. particular lineup. Yes, I'm really not sure how you'd sort of efficiently lead a bleed here for uh, some Vanta. Because what is your proactivity? Like it's Renegade, what, the Renegade which doesn't have yeah. anything good to pull. You can play Phoenix, but that seems a bit uh, questionable uh, yes, against you... this leader. Yes, if you want to to get it out in a round. Yeah. You can drop it. Instead we see the KD over setup uh, playing the dead bomb, yeah. but what that what is that might never die, but comes back with yeah. the Maddox. This is Yeah, this is like very nice sequencing with the Maddox. You can do this either with like more typically a sapper if you play a bomb that only targets enemies, the sapper won't kill itself. Also works from a war council. A very handy trick to play around graveyard punish. Although there isn't any of the assimilate list here. So, onto the Heat of the pulling out the emissary to protect it. Again, no Toll Punish available for San Vanta. So, if you're able to keep out of range of the bombs and the cataclysms, you're doing a pretty good job. Um, okay, we're not clicking Medic apparently. It's fine. Yeah, I don't understand why you wouldn't there. But maybe maybe San Manter is uh, new, maybe he wants to threaten both rows, but yeah, looks like uh, now he remembers. But Yeah, might have just been a moment. But I don't even understand why you wouldn't click the other Maddox to try to get that to roll onto the back row as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there's yeah. just trying to force a split off rows or something. Having 15 point unit, you would want to cataclysm it as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this but is, still, yeah, no, no, nothing great in the graveyard for Renegade when your opponent is just spamming uh, spies. Uh, now, potentially, if you kill Artorius. Which, okay, maybe. Maybe this is all a bait by San Vanda to make Nequiz play into the same row and do it off this Red Haze, but uh, you do see the Red Haze being played around. It's not very good here. Yeah. Mm. Do we double leader? Reveal your forts. Okay. Uh, that was Phoenix yeah. discard, so that uh, there is no interaction with Enslave. Yeah. And you still get it back in round 3. But yeah, San Vantor has probably no illusions of winning and getting an extra card. Uh, winning on even allows you to bleed yeah. as much as you wish, but... Uh, yeah, I guess, what, you, do you just buy people which uh, clog an emissary here? Or just take out. the sort of more efficient route of the Black Cavalry. Okay, takes Black like Cavalry, back rows it. Uh, but so uh, yeah, it's hitting armor at the moment, so not really impressive. Yeah. Place into Red Haze. Uh, like also not impressive value for the Red Haze, but uh, it's something. 
But yeah, here's the problem though. This is getting really awkward for Nequiz on what you throw away here. Um, as we've discussed, uh, the Terra Nova, Artord, and the Nausicaa are all very important um, at working together. If you want your Terra Nova to not suck, you need the Nausicaa still in hand. Because Nequiz only runs one Nausicaa in this deck. Uh, so you need to keep that in hand. Which is why we see the Stefan being considered the least valuable card here. It says Terra Nova is currently worth more than Stefan. Um, at least this Torres is online if you want to play on a sergeant next turn. But you'd prefer to keep that for a one later on. Yeah, and the bleed continues. Uh, uh, for the person saying that there are no drops, that's not true. Lemon's uh, FPS and uh, webcam drops occasionally, so not particularly true in that regard. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Lemon is trying here, okay? Yeah, well, more like my internet is trying and uh, failing. Uh, is this... wait... What is... Is Necris using leader here? Um... Actually, yes. Okay. Is this just to get Terra Nova carryover? Like to allow you to. Yeah, okay. Because, yeah, Terra Nova was going to suck without the. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, yeah. Only Ramon and Sorry, uh, Ramon. you play mm. Nausicaa already. There are no right. soldiers. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. It can cause problems with, like, you're not really able to answer Master of Puppets as much now. So intense math is happening here. Was an inventor. Can he continue the bleed? Still nothing for the Renegade. Uh, will Bomb plus Renegade catch up? There are Maddox coming out. Two leader charges, uh, War Council I, points. I, I, I don't see it really happening. I think you'll be short by at least four points. Um, uh, if, if the sappers were ping in as well, potentially. Yeah. Uh, okay, and actually, I forgot the Maddox coming back. Yeah, okay. that's what I meant. This okay, if, if you you did the math without Maddox, and they are covering those four. Okay. Uh, what is the scariest card? You know that Mashi Truffle is there, but it's not playing for much. But I would assume that uh, 12, 20. Wait, 21, right? So, my, uh, did uh, Nequis forget about the light cavalry ping? Uh, it is pinging, right? Like yeah. Last played unit was the Nausicaa, I believe it is pinging. Or oh, did the Nausicaa die? Oh, no, it's not. Wait, what? Okay, so was there, 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 there were two Nausicaas. Yeah, okay, it was a different Nausicaa, so... Wow. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. those of you watching it now, pay attention to your Nausicaas, would be my message. Uh, so that's 2-2, two, two, and an unexpected turn, but I guess Anvanter... Uh, would struggle in round three. Yeah, I don't so. know if Master Puppets would have been enough. Would have been very gold hand from uh, uh, the Assimilate. Anyways, yeah, I, I predict we're going to see Madoc up against Warriors. Uh, okay, let's we'll see if I'm right. But brave of the you. thing to know is both players have lost twice in this series so far with both of these lists. So the loser of the series will have lost all their games with their losing list. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, let's see if uh, either Maddox or Warriors will be the biggest loser here. Yeah. Okay, so what do we have? We first time seeing Maddox on blue. Maybe that was a secret ingredient. I don't know yeah. how we would go at, about at least, it. <laughs> at least we see the Phoenix early, and in particular, this is a matchup where there isn't any way to kind of steal or banish the Phoenix. I guess in particular, yeah, no enslave. No muzzle, the Phoenix is a lot safer to just play out. Uh, so, very lucky to have that. Um, with that, 
you honestly might not even mind as much going first if you're able to enable that and lovely draw with the king slayer um, that gives a lot of options if you're lacking proactivity you could even play that here but you really would like to get that on a really second matter look away from this Yeah, I, I was just checking. Oh, we see the Maddox protection as well, so that yep. you are uh, guaranteeing nice. guarantee yourself the target for this uh, King Slayer. No access to for second uh, Warlord this time around for Neck with no Vabjorn, no Blood Eagle. Yeah. Yeah, so Sun Vant is already set up maximal carry over at this point. Two Maddox and a Phoenix going into the graveyard. Whereas Nequa is only able to play that one uh, Warlord. Now, Sun Vant doesn't really want to kill that Warlord because then the phrase Blessing would be online. Uh, and uh, doesn't have the Northern Wind either in hand to get that banish. The other thing is also is in Nequa's graveyard right now, there's only, or going into the graveyard, there's only one sort of veteran bronze. So the tier is looking a little bit awkward. Gonna need um, mm -hmm. three nails, Okay, we see no clicks on the Maddox to prevent the Warlord uh, dying, as you pointed out. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, as we go through this round, both players are going to be putting not many points on their side of the board, particularly with that Phoenix <coughs> now being killed off on the side of San Vanta. So it's basically a game of how long are you happy to play into this round? Uh, we see, yeah, the Sapper is sad. He came into this match trying to do his best job, but he's not allowed to because his <laughs> job will be the worst case scenario here. Uh, <laughs> activating the Freya's Blessing. And yeah, we see the bombs from hand instead. Sanvanter decided, I'll do it myself. Sapper, you, you take uh, a leave today. So there, there is an argument as well to kind of save the sapper, especially in this kind of matchup. Because it can be a bit inefficient to kill a whole lot of sappers at once, if you're able to sort of spam them. But yeah. yeah. Awkward day in the Maddox world as well, because the, the Maddox on front row would have liked to, to, to jump here and there, but he is <laughs> buffed to six, so not, not, not a lot of motivation. Uh in there Ooh. as well uh okay you can banish the so warlord then like, wind. <laughs> is it happening or it yeah, yeah, yeah decides that brock war uh is less of an issue still allows to replay the brock war though mm. not not the the best brock war value and there is another one in hand yeah. but uh, nonetheless yeah, I think it's to ensure that this 5 power Maddox isn't killed, you actually get the Cataclysm value. Uh, kind of trades up by 1, but if the opponent killed that Maddox, you could still bring it back with the bomb, and I think you kind of trade up regardless. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know uh, if that click was really... 12 cards played, score 3-2. Uh, Gwent is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Gwent is somewhere. This is just Maddox doing Maddox things, mm. uh, yeah. So yeah, here you really only have the opportunity of playing either the Bomb or the Sapper. I don't think you really want to do much with your Roderick right now. You don't want to give the round up. Lasse is quite important, although perhaps less so, considering there is no Toll Punish here for some Vanta. Although you do have Master of Puppets to maybe sees whatever the tier brings back, but that kind of relies on the Master Puppets living, which I don't think is super likely. What an awkward game number five to decide for who goes into the final of this Gwent Open. Yeah. Uh, unbelievably, yeah. Nali mesh with no, 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 nothing sticking. At least Maddox have this uh, immunity and they are coming back. Everything yeah, that, else that, that is dying thing. is becoming doomed. Yeah, and that's why like Maddox is eventually able to win out here because they're sort of always having at least these eight points on the board, whereas uh, the Warriors just have not been sticking, particularly with like not even any like invaders or whatnot. It's just not really possible. So there's the round control and the potential last save for the Maddox. 
the War Council on board maybe incentivizes a bit of a bleed, but it's, it's going to be quite awkward to lead the bleed here. The Phoenix is gone, though you do need to kind of play into this round here as well to enable the Phoenix. Actually, Smuggle on the Vilg Renegade, that could have been your chance to play something proactive, but there really isn't much in the graveyard yeah. to kind of swap for. What, are you going to pull a Slash or a Warrior? That's a uh, Brookvar Warrior, not so hot. You know what is hot though? No. A, a phoenix egg. It's there's just so much fire around it. Yeah. And, uh, we're gonna see that clicks quite soon. And what are you combining it with? Uh, what is the play? Uh, okay, so there is a match of truffle guaranteed from Roderick. Yeah. Still not much on Renegade. We we we've seen it. Renegade uh, getting that heat wave, uh, but it wasn't enough uh, in a match against Stockpile. So, so far, Renegade yeah. not so good. Yeah. Uh, so do we see a nice. swap? Already, like this bleeds, uh, it's basically a zero, <laughs> but. Yeah. So yeah, if you let the bleed take one more turn, you can give the Master of Puppets over, and uh, by the time it would have had its cooldown refresh, it uh, succumbs to that bleeding. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure when Sunvanta clicks the Phoenix. Like, you need to click the Phoenix before you pass, otherwise it's not coming back for round three. But uh, I think we do see Master Truffle played in this round, so when Roderick flies, yeah, uh, Phoenix might spread its wings as well. Quite poetic there. Yeah. This is all all the reason Gwent, the poetry. No new cards, so we need to fill it with other things. Uh, yes. No. And I hope that other thing is not puppets, because uh, those puppets are all being sent to uh, Sanvanta's graveyard, and that is very much not the graveyard that Sanvanta would prefer. That's quite so grim as well, sending puppets to the graveyard. But Gwent yeah. is a pretty dark game after all. Okay, so we don't. We do see the clicks. Uh, maybe no much truffle in this round then. Decent lead here. Likely a pass. I don't see much reason to play into this. Like you click the work council if you are bringing the Masha Truffle in now. Yeah. M might have done it. Uh, the work council click this turn. Yeah, because then you would have had a soldier for the extra points. Um, but you kind of want to. Would be... Sorry? I was just going to say, like, if this was a pass, it would have required 10 points to catch up, which isn't easy. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, you'd be yeah. required to either go like what Blood Eagle into Blood Eagle B2 uh, Bran does it. Oh, Bran. Bob Yorn. Yeah. You, can, you can set up Bob Yorn. Yeah. I think I think you'd rather keep the Bob Yorn as oh, a potential. Wait. Yeah, it does three. You turn. can kill the Maddox. Yeah. Or also just play the invader, that's probably the better decision. That sh yeah, that's enough here. Yeah. yeah. That is enough indeed. So, nice for Nequis. Two uh, veteran invaders in the graveyard. Uh, but that does maybe give an illusionist target over to uh, the Maddox list now. Because uh, one of them gets brought back with the tier. Whereas the other will remain as a pretty nice target if the Bonded is able to go through there on the Illusionists. And uh, there's kind of limited raids here. Also not many Warlords played. The Primal Savagery is only at 3 damage. So kind of uh, not a huge scope of what that's able to scope out and take out. Mm -hmm. Man, this uh, Vilgefort's Renegade uh, is... Uh... Yeah, not, not doing its job so yeah. far. 
Not I delivering. Mean, just, it could have been some cute lines, like if you played out the Fukushi, you could kill the Fukusha, then like bring her back and replay something, but uh, yeah, it's... Is there a something that you'd want? You, you still haven't played your Arturios, uh, and then your graveyard is also not that hot. Yeah, we see the uh, yeah. Savagery go into the graveyard, uh, dealing only 3 damage if I'm not mistaken. That uh, is potentially risky against Marsha Truffle. Although, yeah, for sure. you you have your leader, so you, you could have provided that value, but all the other cards seem to be better. World of Clans mm. is dealing 3 as well, and you can use like Brock War. There's some folks that can't even bring the Maddox out of the graveyard here, which is quite less than ideal. Because you want at least one bomb, because that's eight points coming back from your graveyard. Yeah. Otherwise, it's literally just illusionist spam. The build before it's renegade, I don't think, is. Yeah. It's Should, we talk... more than helping. Should we talk about Nequis's deck? Leftovers? Yeah, it's it's kind of grim for that as well. Execution uh, missing, Kaotrog missing, and also the Vabiona champions charge, which which might have liked Vabiona earlier would have helped you get like a second warlord, which is again still stuck in the deck as well as the phrase blessing. Yeah. So not not the greatest showing from both decks uh, in terms of no. uh, uh, showcasing its uh, best potential. No, no ideal matchups found as well. These illusionists can't even get master puppets, so I guess you just go all in on the illusionists onto the six point invaders. You will not regret this. Good, sir. I have the bonded now. Yeah. But the problem is, Five these one power points. units help with the bloodthirst. Yeah. So the half roof should come through on the soap. Uh, do, do you hit a one power illusionist with the slave driver? Does it matter? No, right, I think I we see the. I don't think there's much reason to. Yeah, I think we also see the solve going through now, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Wanna know why I got my star? The hidden Fukusha is oh, not, not being shown here. Six damage is uh, what you are doing. Uh, point gap uh, is there. You have 16 point invader. Do. Are Skelligers even happy if the, the things start looking sh sunny for them? Do they do they feel happiness or do they prefer stormy skies? I mean, when you come out of the storm, maybe that's the best feeling, you know? You've carefully navigated, maybe had a raid, your shipper successfully sunk the enemy. But, uh... I think it's looking pretty sunny though for the Skelliger here. You have this slave driver which is running out of space to get any good illusionist shenanigans. Maybe some will be freed up here. It's uh, not looking like it. And if an, even if people ask you to play round four, you still have Fukusha, Vabjorn, Kyrtral there. So you are all set yeah. with that loot that you mentioned. It's probably those cards uh, that Skelliger's got. Uh, uh, so, illusion is spam. <laughs> this Wheel of Thoughts Renegade is good. It gets rid of the Slave Driver, which didn't have enough space, and instead you get an 8-point Invader. Clutch. So it's, it's good. Okay, so Vabjorn uh, into champions charge there is, there is more than enough bloodthirst uh, and uh, a final yeah. act of will and we have our first finalist uh, red wins the game sand Ranter forfeits and nequis uh, gets the job done with warriors uh, warriors uh, confirmed a strong deck can win in the in the semi-final so there we have it, uh, E-Fury getting 
the golden border here and Nequis wins with his stockpile and slave uh, and uh, warriors congratulations uh, Sandwanter is out this is a single elimination event so he cannot play anymore uh, uh, I'll show where is it uh, the bracket so into the final you go Sandwinter leaves the tournament with $75 and 10 crown points uh, you can use the commands uh, for masters uh, 